Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel which provides geography videos for school pupils and teachers across the UK. In this particular video I'm going to be looking at the three different plate margins which you'll need to be familiar with for passing your GCSE geography exam. Let's dive straight in. So the first one that we're going to look at is a destructive A destructive margin. So feel free to draw this as I draw it or just watch and listen. So here we go. We have got two plates moving towards each other. Now both of these plates are different. This one here is an oceanic plate and this plate is a continental. Plate. So let's just um, define both of those. Oceanic obviously is carrying an ocean and continental is carrying land. Now where these two plates meet here, the oceanic plate, because it's denser, is forced under the continental. The correct term of saying that is it's subducted under the continental plate. So this part right here this is known as the subduction zone and there it goes the oceanic plate is being forced under the continental now as that plate is being forced under it's rubbing against the continental now that friction which is generated from two rocks rubbing against each other causes large amounts of heat so we've got friction that leads to large amounts of heat and of course that heat is so intense it leads to this rock here melting into magma so that melted rock here it is here over here that's our magma now the magma is under intense levels of pressure to Guys, I'm interrupting your geography lesson for 60 seconds only. Stick with me, listen to me. You are probably watching this video right now because you are studying for your GCSE geography. Yes, am I right? Good. Now, are you struggling with your revision? Are you struggling with time management? Do you not know what to revise, how to revise? Are you struggling with exam skill? Are you feeling stressed and just need a little bit of help? If any of that applies to you, help is at hand. Presenting a brand new online tuition geography platform designed to help school pupils across the UK work towards GCSE geography exam success. Ladies and gentlemen, I am proud to present the Genius Geography Guide, a platform designed to help every pupil achieve the grade they deserve. Would you like more information? If you would, very simple. Click on the link below this video and all the details that you will need to get yourself onto this platform will be there. Now back to your geography lesson. You want to rise to the surface. So the pressure is forcing that magma to rise up, rise up, rise up. It's pushing bits of rock out of the way. Keep rising, keep rising, keep rising. And as that magma rises to the surface, it eventually explodes onto the surface in the form of a volcano. Let me just go through that one more time. There's quite a bit there. So destructive plate boundary. We've got an oceanic plate. We've got a continental plate. Both plates are moving slowly together. They meet. The oceanic plate, because it's denser, which means it's heavier, is forced under, subducted, the continental. It's not a smooth mo movement. It's jagged. There's lots of friction building up. And this rock here, which is underneath the continental now, is being rubbed against the continental, causing friction. That friction causes large amounts of heat, which causes this rock here to melt 
into magma. So the rock is now melted, it's in magma, liquid form underneath, but it's under a lot of pressure, so it's been forced to rise to the surface, and as soon as it rises to the surface, that's when we get our volcano. So that's number one, destructive. Number two, I'm gonna draw that down here. So number two is gonna be constructive. Now a perfect example of a constructive plate margin is the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. So here we've got two plates. On top of those two plates, we've got an ocean. So we've got two oceanic plates and they're both this time moving in opposite directions. Now, as the two plates move in opposite directions, a gap opens up between those two plates. Now, that gap is a weakness in the Earth's crust. And deep below the Earth's crust, we've got magma trying to exploit any weaknesses. And as soon as those two plates move apart, it allows this magma to exploit that gap and come onto the surface. And as that magma comes onto the surface, that would be an underwater volcano. And of course, at the bottom of the ocean, temperatures are much lower. So when that magma comes onto the ocean floor, it hardens into solid rock. And we start to get mountain ranges forming on the bottom of our oceans and of course there may now be another eruption a future eruption so more magma comes out goes on top of that hardens there could be another eruption and you can see how mountain ranges are forming on the bottom of our oceans due to magma coming up from deep under the ground so let's just go through that one more time constructive Perfect example is the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, where you've got two plates, both oceanic, moving in opposite, this time opposite directions. They're moving apart. And as they move apart, there's a gap that opens up between the two plates. That gap is a weakness. And deep beneath the, these two plates, under the ground, we've got magma trying to rise up to the surface under immense pressure. And when it gets that little bit of weakness, that, that gap it can exploit, it goes through that gap onto the ocean floor in a form of an underwater volcano. That magma hardens and forms um, underwater mountain ranges. So that's constructive. One more. We're gonna draw this one here. So the third one is easy to remember because you just think of a, a political party is conservative. A conservative plate margin. Now, with this one, there's two things that could happen, okay? So, the first thing that could happen, you could have two plates moving in the same direction. However, one plate might be moving a little bit faster than the other. Now, because of that, those two plates can become stuck and as they become stuck, pressure is going to build up, build up, build up, build up, build up. So eventually, when that pressure is finally released, that's going to cause a massive earthquake. Equally, another way this could happen as well, we could get two plates moving in opposite directions. And once again, those two plates are moving in opposite directions, but we are talking about large amounts of rock here, the size of continents. So of course, that movement, those two plates, they can become stuck. And pressure, once again, builds up, builds up, builds up, builds up, until eventually that pressure is released and one of the plates jolts forward. And when that happens, once again, we get a massive earthquake. So, just to clarify, um, conservative again. You could have two plates moving in the same direction, but one plate could be moving much faster than the other, so it becomes stuck. Pressure builds up, builds up, builds up, builds up, so eventually one of those plates darts forward, causes an earthquake, or what you could have is two plates moving in opposite directions, they become stuck, pressures build up, building up, building up, until eventually 
pressures released, also causing an earthquake. So guys, there you go. For your GCC exam, you need to know three plate boundaries, destructive, constructive, and conservative. Take note of the subject content and the knowledge that I've given you in this video, but also how you would draw each one. Because in your exam, you may have to draw a diagram to support your answer. Right, thanks for watching. If this video has been useful, please do give this video a like, add a positive comment down below, and please do share this video with a friend and subscribe to the channel. Guys, I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Take care.